it's all a bit of a blur now because um, my career is it was a long time ago and it's yeah. not until we have the conversations and you tell me that you were born in 2003 yeah. <laughs> that I go, my goodness me, I definitely do feel exceptionally old. Um, but yeah, I, I find that it's, it's so exciting to see youngsters on their journeys and starting mm. out on their journeys. Um, particularly Queenslanders yeah. um, and I think that was my desire was growing up in country Queensland I just wanted to represent my state mm. so um, I was lucky enough to get um, a scholarship to the AIS so I spent 2006 and 2007 down there. I was a very very shy very shy country girl had never left home struggled leaving home um, I actually grew up not far from Claire McMinimum, so she was from oh, Warwick, really? yeah, and cool. um, so she was the only person that I knew was down at the AIS in Canberra, yeah. and we didn't really even know each other yeah. um, before we moved down there together. Yeah, I suppose I, I just spent the two years down there on scholarship, which was um, good for me because I was physically removed from yeah. home, so I couldn't just get in the car and drive. Yeah. home for the weekend because um, I did get really homesick particularly in those first three months mm. to the point I remember calling home one day and just saying to mum and dad this isn't for me really yeah like yeah. <laughs> I just <laughs> I always thought I wanted to play netball for Queensland and even for Australia but if this is what it takes yeah. then I, I just don't think I've got it in me because yeah. um, I was just really so homesick and I remember my dad was on the on the phone and he said to me oh tell me a little bit about you know the other girls in the team mm. and I couldn't really tell him anything because I literally would lock myself in my room go to training come home I knew their names obviously but I didn't know too much about them and he said when you can tell me a little bit about your teammates mm. um, what's at the AIS and what's in Canberra, further outside of the AIS, and you still hate it, mm. you can maybe come home. And he hung up the phone on me. <laughs> <laughs> and for Dad, that was a, like, he was a very, very kind, nurturing, like, that was very out of character yeah. for him to do that. And I was like, when he hung up the phone, I was like, that's coming from a man that has literally moved 100 metres. He was a farmer. <laughs> so he grew up in the house here and moved 100 metres across the road. And I was like, that's a bit rich, man, coming from someone, you know. So cool. um, and I was like, okay, well, I'll go out and be really positive and, you know, um, meet the girls and see what's at the AIS and, and then I can get home as soon as possible. Yeah. But um, what actually happened after doing that was I found out that the girls that were there were all very homesick. They were very like-minded, mm. beautiful girls um, that became some of my best mates. Um, Canberra wasn't such a bad place and the dining hall <laughs> was like obviously a highlight of the AIS, but yeah. just the whole facilities of being down there, I was like, oh, you know, there's so many people that would give their right arm for this opportunity. Um, and as I said to you, it turned out being one of the best years of my life. I just loved it so much that I, I stayed for a second year. Yeah. Um, so that was where my journey began. Yeah. And then in 2008, I got a phone call, probably very similar to the phone call that you would have received. Um, mine was from Vicky Wilson, who was the coach, to say there's a position at the Firebirds in 2008, um, if you want to come back. Um, and that was like, that was just the beginning of, you know, um, of the early morning sessions. Yeah. I hadn't relocated to Brisbane at that point in time. I was still yeah. living with my family on the farm. And I would like, yeah, what, what time do you guys start morning sessions? Um, we start now around seven o'clock. Seven, yeah, so we used so. to start, because the girls would go to work after training. Yeah. So we used to be, we'd even have five, 5.30, 6 a.m. Oh, sessions. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> yeah, and, um, and Allura was about two and a half hours from here, so I'd leave about three hours. So I'd be up at like 3 a.m., 
coming oh down the Cunningham Highway. Mum would never let me drive by myself. She would be like, I'm not letting you, you'll be exhausted and you know, you're on that road by yourself. So she, probably very similar to your parents, um, they're a massive part of your journey. Yeah. And, um, she was a huge, well, both mum and dad were a massive part of, of the journey and that's how it all sort of began. But I think when you're in it, and you would know now, you just do it because it's yeah. your dream. Yeah. It's not, it's hard, but you know, you've got the passion for it. So it's yeah. what gets you up in the morning, isn't it? Oh, absolutely. And like we were talking about before, how when you go into a conditioning session and how much you dread it, but you just do it anyway. Yeah. And I love like Gabby, who's always the one who's pulling us in and just saying like, these are the moments where it counts. And you just get so inspired and you just keep going. But yeah, when we, how old were you when you started at Firebirds? I was, yeah, I was 20. Right. Um, yeah, I was 20, 2008. Um, and that was the same year that I was invited into the Australian Diamonds environment as well. Um, Liz Ellis had retired, so there yeah. was a position in that goalkeeper to bring someone through, like in that training partner. So I'd go down to Canberra into the, um, you know, when the, like I, I remember my, my first Aussie Diamonds training camp. Um, and we had like scratch matches, match play, and you had to wear dresses and we were just throwing like all these dresses. <laughs> and I was like putting on these dresses that had like Ellis on the back and McMahon and wow. you just go, oh my so gosh, real. how does this happen? Like, yeah. you know, I was like just at home watching them on the TV, it felt like. Yeah. And now all of a sudden I'm in their company going to, you know, the dining hall, seeing them sitting there and, and the same with the Firebirds. Like, I remember coming back into the environment and Katie Walker was um, a significant team member at that point in time and I had moved back from Canberra with another girl, Janelle Lawson, who was contracted with the Firebirds as well. Oh, yeah. um, and you know, we were living together, we we did, we moved in together um, in on Caxton Street. There was five of us, there was Janelle, myself, Jenny O'Connor. Um, and Thames and Greenway, who was like one of the very first English imports oh. that came over. Oh. So there was four of us, sorry, yeah, there was four of us living together. Um, and that was like, it, honestly, like I look back on those years and I think, oh, that's some of the best years of my mm. life, you know, just um, playing netball, doing what you love, doing it with some of your best mates. Yeah. And that's what I would say to you girls now, like that are just starting out on your journey. Like, yeah. this is like, these are the best years ahead of you. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and like, it's so easy to get caught up in, you know, like the conditioning and like how hard it is and you just get so sucked into the training, but when you look at it, like yeah. these are just the best years. And do you, like when you, do you think about ahead, like obviously you've been in the training partner environment yeah. for the last two seasons. Yeah. Um, and you know, there's obviously huge opportunities. You've now obviously got the likes of Beck leading the charge, yeah. who I've played with in 20, what years were they? 2016, 2015, 2016. Um, and now she's mm. obviously, Circle. leading the charge <laughs> um, and she I'm so excited for you girls to have Beck because she is and as a player she was there's a, a beautiful caring side to Beck mm. we used to refer to her as Arnie Beck because she'd always oh, come really? to training with like meals cooked and you know but she's a bit of a quiet assassin a yeah. silent assassin <laughs> i can see that she is very competitive yeah she's all about winning um probably i think she was voted in terms of the diamonds environment one of the most competitive she was the most competitive out of yeah. everyone and people don't see that about beck they just <laughs> see that she's obviously very like nice and and comes across you know yeah. so well spoken but there is like a little fox terrier attitude <laughs> under all of that and she will win at all costs and i love like she's all about high performance as well yeah. so i think that in terms of i think from a younger athlete's point of view um 
it's really important to be exposed to some tough love mm. um, in a sense. I think there's obviously a fine line, but professional sport isn't easy mm. by any stretch of the imagination. Um, there's the highest of highs and there's the lowest of lows. And I think when you come into the environment and you think it's gonna be, you know, a walk in the park, it's definitely not. Mm. So I think if you've got <laughs> somebody like a Beck or a, a coach and even the players around you that just are there to support you yeah. um, through those challenges. And, and that's what I would say to, to players and, and young people going through it, like the challenges are the most important part of your journey. Mm. Um, we always talk about premierships here at Firebirds, 2015, 2016, we went back to back, everyone remembers those years. No, <clears throat> no one remembers 2013, 2014, where we made the grand final, but we lost. Yeah. Um, and we saved our worst performance for the grand final. But the only reason we won in 2015 and 2016 was because of 2013 mm. and 2014. Yeah. You know, and that's where everyone just looks at the good times and goes, yeah. oh, they're the career highlights. But yeah. the reason you get to there is because of, you know, the hard years that you got through. So I always say like challenges, injuries, losses, whenever it happens, it's happening for a very important reason. Mm -hmm. um, and it drives you harder than anything to get the success. So sometimes, so when you go through your career <laughs> and you have your losses and you lose the grand finals, think of it as a blessing. Mm -hmm. Think yeah. of it as a, as a sign of showing you just how much more work you have to do and how much more you actually really want the wounds. Yeah.